High Adventure. Tonight's gripping story by Ron Evans is entitled The Saga of the Betsy Jane. I'm reading you, Betsy Jane. Over. This is a mayday. 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 Aircraft Betsy Jane on flight from Miami to Hamilton. This is Miami Control Tower. Can you give me your position? 18 minutes out from Miami, on a direct course, flying at 170 knots. Over. You got engine trouble? Over. I don't know. I'm experiencing phenomenal turbulence. It's throwing the plane every which way. My instrument reading is going crazy and I'm losing altitude. I'm alerting the Coast Guard for you. Over. Look, I can't hold the plane. We're going down. Tell the Coast Guard... Hello? Hello, Betsy Jane. Do you read me? Come in, Betsy Jane. You got a mate, Agent? Yeah, it seems like he's crashed. It's that little four-seater that took off 20 minutes ago. Pilot and three passengers. I'd better get hold of the Coast Guard. Jeff Miles, and that Mayday distress call from Betsy Jane wasn't the first one I'd experienced, but it sure was the most unusual. It was a warm summer afternoon a few years ago when the small aircraft took off en route to Bermuda. Within minutes of receiving my call, the Coast Guard had sent out two helicopters and a cutter to search the area. In cases like these, sooner or later the fateful story can be told by either survivors or pieces of wreckage. But no trace of Betsy Jane was found during the five-day search. The case was closed and attributed to freak weather conditions in the immediate area. To the supernatural lovers, the Betsy Jane was regarded as yet another victim of the Bermuda Triangle. Yet the facts behind the disappearance of Larry Pedler and his three passengers were to prove that both assumptions were wrong, as you are now about to hear. Larry Pedler and his girlfriend, Gwen Smythe, had flown from their homes in Hamilton, Bermuda, to spend the weekend at Miami with two American friends, Mark Grayson and Jenny Aldred. They stayed at the Barracuda Hotel, and on the morning of their departure, Mark and Jenny called to say farewell and share a last drink. Well... I've lodged my flight plans, and we're leaving at two. <laughs> I'm glad to see you're only drinking orange juice, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> After last night's session, that's about all I can handle anyway. Uh, on the drive over here, Jenny and I got to talking. Like, uh, what I mean is, how many can you carry in your plane? Four. Are you thinking of a trip to Bermuda? <laughs> oh, right. First time. <laughs> Look, we'd like to, if it isn't any trouble, Larry. Well, I think it's a great idea. You can both stay at my place. Oh, great. It'll be fantastic, Jenny. How long could you stay? Well, a week at least. That is if it isn't too much trouble. <laughs> ah, you're welcome. It's no problem at all. Right. Well, all Jenny and I have to do is let folks know and pick up some baggage. Uh, keep it light, huh? Uh, Jenny lives over the other side of town, so I'd better drive her over after this drink, huh? Well, I'll follow your car, and you can leave it at home instead of coming to the airport or parking lot. Well, here's to a pleasant flight. <laughs> well, I... I'll drink to that. <laughs> At 2.13, Larry got permission to take off, and at 2.30, he was flying at 4,000 feet on a direct course for his island home, Bermuda. Below was a calm expanse of blue water that reflected the sunlight in tiny ripples. The sky was clear, and the Florida coastline had already disappeared behind them. Is uh, this the first time you've flown, Jenny? Oh, I've flown to New York and Seattle, but, well, this is the first time in a small plane like this. It's great. Much more interesting than an airbus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'd take up flying sometime. Well, I'll take you up a couple of times over the week. Help you to get the feel of it. Don't Terrific. let him do any tricks if he does, Mark. <laughs> He's something of a daredevil at times. <laughs> hey! Hey, what was that? 
<laughs> Very good. Larry's just trying to scare your pants. No, not that time. I don't know what it was. For a moment, it felt like there, there was no air under the wings. <laughs> Ghost of the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> hey, don't, Mark. It's not funny. All right. There's something in those strange tales. Oh, why did you have to go and put that into my mind? Sorry, Jenny. I was only joking. Ah, oh, take no notice of him. Larry and I have flown this route dozens of times in the last two years. Hey, there he goes again. Oh, Larry, Gosh. are you sure you're not fooling around? Look, I don't know what it is, honestly. We lost 50 feet then. Oh, something must be doing it. Damn, it's getting worse. Oh. We are losing height. I can feel it. Could it be the engine? No. No, it's nothing like that. It's as though there's a, well, a great turbulence outside. As though we're battling our way through a hurricane. The six seems oh. to have a mind of its own. Hey, look, look it, it might be better higher up, huh? I can't get altitude. All I'm doing is losing it. Okay. Our airspeed's going down as well. Larry! Look, I don't know what that was, but it felt as if... Well, as if we had been hit by a gigantic hand. Look, maybe we'll fly clear of it, huh? That's what I'm hoping. Trouble is, we're down to 3,000 feet already. Oh. Everyone tighten your seatbelts. Oh, okay. Are we, are we going to crash? Steady on it. Not if I can help it. We've never known anything like this before. Larry, can't you call for help or something? Not yet. We might just fly clear of it. Uh, oh. Hey! Oh, Mark! Oh. Mark, do something before the plane falls to bits, please. <laughs> call for help before it's too late. I think you'd better do that, Larry. This is aircraft Betsy Jane. Do you read me? Mayday, mayday, mayday. They're not answering, Larry. But keep calm, Ben. This is aircraft Betsy Jane. Do you read me? Mayday, mayday, mayday. I'm reading you, Betsy Jane. <laughs> Here they are. This is a mayday, mayday, mayday. Aircraft Betsy Jane on flight from Miami to Hamilton. This is Miami Control Tower. Can you give me your position? I'm 18 minutes... Out of Miami, on a direct course, flying at 170 knots. Over. Have you got engine trouble? Look, I don't know, but I'm experiencing phenomenal turbulence. It's throwing the plane every which way, and my instruments are going crazy. I've lost at altitude. I'm alerting the Coast Guard for you. Over. Look, I can't hold the plane. We're going down. <laughs> Tell the Coast Guard that I'll be ditching on calm water. Over. <laughs> Look, Miami, do you read me? Does anybody read me, damn it all? I keep trying, Larry. Look, it's Larry. pointless. We're down to 700 feet, and I'll have to concentrate on making a decent landing. We're, we're going to crash? That is, sort of. But please, don't get alarmed. I can make a fair belly flop on the surface, and with luck, we'll float for a while. We need to wear some life preservers. Gwen, get them out, will you? Okay. Oh, Larry, you're not kidding. Is the plane will really float? If the fuselage doesn't suffer any severe stress or damage on landing, yes. Oh. Right. I'm going to drop down to a little above stalling speed and try to get the tail down into the water first. So what we do is hang on tight. I'm going down now. Larry Pedler knew his plane like a mother knows her baby. As he skimmed little more than six feet above the surface, the plane stopped shuddering and rolling. Still reducing speed, he put slight pressure on the stick. Feeling the tail touch, he cut the engine. The plane bounced several times on the surface and turned as one of the wings dipped. And then all was still and the Betsy Jane floated easily on the calm surface. Larry Pedler had made a perfect landing. Well, we're all in one piece. Are you all right, right Jenny? I'm oh, just a bit shaken up. Are we going to be all right? Uh, I don't think there's anything to worry about. Don't move about. All we have to do now is wait for the Coast Guard to pick us up. If that man of Miami keeps his promise... Sure, he'll keep his promise, Jenny. It's his job. A mayday call has priority over all else. Yeah, I heard that. The Coast Guard will be on their way out already. A few more minutes, and they'll be here. How will we get out? The water's just above the level of the doors. Oh, we can smash the glass and get out under the wing. No problem. You know, if I'd known about this, I'd, I'd have brought my fishing tackle. <laughs> Great spot for game fish, you know. Yeah, sharks as well. Oh, sharks. As far as I'm concerned, that, that's just another game fish. Say, Larry, see if your radio's working now, will you? Maybe you can pick up Miami again. Damn it. No joy. It's deader than a canned herring. Oh, no. Anyway, I think it's uh, better for us to keep occupied by looking out of the windows for our rescuers. 
First to spot them gets a bottle of the best champagne. <laughs> You're on. So long as the winner shares out between us. Something's wrong, Larry. Something terribly, terribly wrong. They must have spotted us by now. They must be blind. The men in that plane that flew over must have seen us. Well, we're not very big, but you're right. They should have spotted us. Well, perhaps they're reporting our position to the Coast Guard cutter. Yeah, yeah. Damn it, I wish the radio was working. Oh, it's nearly two hours now. Look, there's nothing to get alarmed about yet, Gwen. The plane hasn't taken any water yet. You never know. She could have, well, she could float for a week or more. Oh, who's going to wait that long to see? I know, it's unthinkable. Anyway, it's better being able to sit here than having to float around in a life preserver. Well, Larry's right. <laughs> Who wants shark snapping at oh, the legs? shut though? up, Mark. You're making me nervous. Yes, right. come on. Let's keep looking on the brighter side. Eh? Larry? Larry, I saw something. Well, what is it? Over there, look. It must be a ship. Yeah, yeah I see oh, it. Hey. It's the upper part of a Coast Guard cutter. Oh, Larry was right. The plane must have reported our position. Can't quite make out which way she's going. Too low down on the horizon. Yeah, how far up would you say? I'd say, uh... Not more than two miles. From our low position, it's impossible to see much further than that. It's heading for us. You can see it getting bigger. No. No, it's not heading directly for us, but uh, her course will take her, well, no more than a couple of hundred yards away. Yeah, yeah. They'll be sweeping the area in some sort of pattern, I should so imagine. we have to wait patiently now. That's all we can do, Jen. You know, a few weeks ago, a guy tried to sell a dozen distress rockets to me. I told him I flew a plane, not a boat. <laughs> Damn sorry now that I didn't get them. But then, who would have expected that I'd be sailing the Betsy Jane around here? In the Bermuda Triangle. Yes. The Bermuda Triangle. Hey, Larry. Yeah, what's up? The cutter, it's turned away from us. Oh, no. I can't. You, know, you can see it has. Look. Larry, they haven't spotted us. Well, look, can we do something to attract their attention before it's too late? Look, we can't open the door. Oh, but there oh. must be something. Yes. Well, uh, we could knock a hole in the roof and uh, one of us could climb out. All right, let's do it. But it is a gamble, huh? Oh, why, Larry? Because the compartment here is airtight, like a buoyancy tank. Oh, no. Knock a hole in the roof, and it's possible the water might start coming in under the doors. Oh, Larry. Well, look, we're going to have to do it sooner or later. The air in here is already fouling up. I'm willing to risk it if you are. Okay. It's only plywood. There's a hammer and a large screwdriver under the seat. Okay. Yeah, Break okay. through directly above your head, Mark. I, I got him. But it could take ages, and, and the cutter's almost gone from view. It'll probably come back this way in its sweep. And we'll be ready for it. And if it doesn't... Don't even think about it. For a long time, they watched through the windows for signs of the cutter. Perched on top of the fuselage, Mark Grayson was able to see even farther. But the horizon was empty. And it stayed that way until the sun began to set. Look, I'm sorry, but... I'm afraid that we're going to have to be realistic about this. It's going to be dark soon, so I think we'll have to accept the fact that we are going to have to be stuck in here all night. Huh? Oh, that's what I was thinking. Well, in several ways, we must be thankful for small mercies. Well, why, tell you that. Larry? Well, look at it this way. The weather's calm, every sign of staying that way. We're all alive, and we're all unhurt. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, finally... We're certain that rescue is on the way, even though it's taking longer than we expected. Hey, Larry. Larry, what do we do for food? Well, I, I did a lot of shopping in Miami, so I've got a fair amount of foodstuffs that are difficult or too expensive to buy in Bermuda. Mainly canned goods. Hey, that's a relief. Gosh, I, I hope somebody's got an opener. Well, no, I don't have an opener, but I do have a pocket knife. With all the tools that a good camper needs to survive in the wild. Oh, good. Lack of water could be a problem, though, Larry. Well... 
The plane's engine is water-cooled. With any luck, I can get outside in the morning and tap some. It's getting too dark to see up here. Look, I think you'd better come back inside. We've already resigned ourselves to the fact that we're going to have to wait till morning. Aloy. I can't figure out why they didn't spot us. As I said before, we're very low in the water. And don't worry, they'll start searching again for us at first light. The night passed, and so did the following day. During the daylight hours, they spotted two planes and the passing merchant ship. They all went by as though the frantically signaling survivors didn't exist. During that day, the girls also went outside to perch on top of the fuselage. But having more than two outside at once made Larry Padler worry about the aircraft's stability. He made it a rule that there must always be two or more in the cabin. As the sun began to set on them for the second time, Larry knew the time had come for drastic survival measures. Gwen, I want you to make a list of all the edibles. I've done that. It comes to 14 cans of food and, and six cans of coconut puree. All right. So, if we work on the basis of one a day, it should last us 20 days. 20 days? The thought of it makes me shudder. And one can a day between the four of us? Oh, that's impossible, Larry. We're talking about survival. Hmm? It'll be enough to keep us alive. Oh. All right, all right. He's right, Jed. I, I suppose so. I reckon we'll have to start thinking of the worst now. What's the water situation? Well, the best I could get from the engine was three gallons. Is that oh. all? To make it last as long as the food, we can only drink a third of a pint each what? per day. Larry oh, Craig. and uh, there's one last thing. Yeah? At least once a day, we must go over the side and immerse ourselves in seawater. Oh, but I... That way, the body can absorb small amounts of liquids, and it'll reduce our physical need to drink so much. Yeah. What about the sharks? Well, maybe they're the best alternative. Oh, but, but, Larry, I, I, I can't swim. Okay, okay. There is another way of doing it. Yeah? Both wings are a few inches below the surface, and two at a time can lie and splash about in the water on top of them. Oh, no. All right? Half an hour a day, one on each side to keep the balance oh, no, right. No, no, I'd be too scared. Oh, no, you'll be all right, Jen. Look, the water's only inches deep on the wings. No more than eight or nine at the most. I'll take you out and show you how. No, I can't risk having two of you on the same side. Hmm? As I said, one on each side, on each wing. Huh? Yes, of course. I'll show her by example, then. You know, the thing that bothers me most right now is the risk of bad weather. We're into the hurricane season, you know, now. Yeah, and even a choppy sea could give us problems. Anyway, so far the signs are good. As for the future, well, all we can do is keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best. Which brings us to something else that's been puzzling me. What was it that brought us down? There was no wind, or the sea would have been choppy. Ah, uh, freak air conditions. Mark, this area is renowned for them. Uh, They're most likely responsible for the stories we've all heard about the Bermuda Triangle. I'd say it was, well, rather like a miniature whirlwind that held us in its grip. Almost down to sea level. Almost down to sea level. So you could have pulled out of it just before we no, had water? No, 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 I tried. There was no way I could push up against it. Ditching was our only hope. The search for the Betsy Jane continued for six days before all hope was abandoned. The survivors saw planes pass over several times, but by some freak chance, they were unseen. Larry Pedler was, fortunately, of strong character, and his domination was the one factor that offered a hope of survival. He jealously guarded the pitifully few provisions and personally rationed them out. The first week was bad. But by the end of the second week, their physical condition began to show obvious signs of severe deterioration. All began to suffer from abscesses, and Jenny began to refuse the tiny amounts of food which were offered her. She was visibly shriveling before her companion's eyes. Mark tried to force feed her, but the little she did take came back up minutes later. She was too weak to go outside, and Gwen washed down her body twice daily with seawater. And then Gwen began to get similar symptoms. And by the 18th day, it seemed as though both girls would surely die. To complicate matters more, the cabin began to leak. Not much, but enough to compel Mark and Larry to bail out every six hours. One thing remained in their favor. The weather continued fine. 
It was on this 18th day that fate and irony took a hand. Larry, I, I can't bear to see Jenny like this. Yeah. Just fading away. She sleeps most of the time, but when she's awake, she doesn't recognize me anymore. Yeah, Gwen's getting the same way. <laughs> Damn it, Larry. Can we increase their rations? What rations? We're almost down to zero as it is. I say. Honestly, Mark, if I thought it would do any good, I'd... What is it? What's wrong? Over there. Build up of clouds. You know what that means? Ah, oh, yeah. Hurricane. That's why it's been so hot and still today. And if it hits us, there's no use kidding. No way we could survive. I want some music, please. Oh, can I have some music? All right, Kenny, all right. At least I can do that for you. There we go. Don't switch that tape recorder on, Mark. Well, no, Jenny wants some music. I said, hold it. You want to get out of this alive now, don't you? Why? Seeing the tape has given me an idea. Gwen, where's our tape recorder? In the overnight bag. Down, down at the bottom. Larry, what, what do you got in mind? Look, how are the batteries? Well, they're, they're new. So are ours. We can generate 12 volts with them. Enough to work the radio for a short period. Hey, you think... Don't you see? We can give another Mayday call. Heaven knows how far we've drifted, but somebody out there should hear us. You, you mean... You mean that uh, all this time we had the means of making the radio work? Maybe. I don't know for sure yet, but sure as hell I'm going to try. Look, now, first of all, I need some wire to link the eight batteries. Right. I I no, no. Leave them in their battery compartment. I know just how to do it. I had only been on duty ten minutes when I heard, faint but clear. Mayday. 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 Do you read me? This is the Mayday. 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 This is Miami Air Control. Identify yourself and give me your position. This is the Betsy Jane. Ditched 18 days ago. Position not known. Our situation... I read you, and I'm sending immediate assistance. Stand by. I'll come back to you. I was rigid with amazement, and it took several minutes to convince the Coast Guard that the call wasn't a sick hoax from some crank. After a study of drift and currents, a fair estimate was made of the survivor's position, and a fresh rescue operation began. At 9 a.m. on the 19th day of their ordeal, the occupants of Betsy Jane were picked up by a Coast Guard cutter and landed soon after at Miami. All four survivors had to spend a while in hospital. The girls were almost a whole month. As for the Betsy Jane, well, I doubt if she survived the hurricane that blew up the following day. Just another statistic. Another victim of the Bermuda Triangle. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal. <laughs>